Hi, I'm John, the Unilet's anti-poverty engineer, candidate in the Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock provincial by-election. And my slogan is, I want no cops and gambling, sex or drugs or rock and roll. I want no usury on loans. Pay cash or time. No dole. So this is about the first by-election debate that took place in Halliburton, Ontario, to which I had not been invited. Usually I go and crash the debate, but this time I was just driving back from Obama's and I decided I wasn't going to go without an invitation, so they missed me. But here's what happened. Sparks but no flames at by-election debate in Halliburton. Most candidates stress their ties to the riding. No ideas, but they live here. Anyway, I was in Ottawa picketing Obama. I kept checking my phone to see if I'd gotten an invitation. I knew this was in a private club and therefore private resort. Therefore, they probably had security. And I really didn't need going up all the way up to Halliburton to be refused access. So I went home instead and found out later that other candidates had been allowed to participate. So I could have too, but I wasn't invited. So I didn't go. And it's posted by Martha Perkins and uh, from the Halliburton Echo. And anyone expecting fireworks at Thursday night's all candidates meeting had to be content with a few incendiary flares that failed to spark a more heated debate. Conservative candidate John Tory was there at the Delta Pinestone Resorts Ballroom where he said he'd learned his lesson about religious school funding in the last election and was never going to even mention the topic again. Green Party candidate Mike Schreiner was taken to task by one of his pre predecessors, Doug Smith, who was angry that the party steamrolled Schreiner as the candidate rather than hold a nomination meeting. In 1984, I joined the Green Party of Canada. I was at the founding convention at my alma mater, Carleton University uh, in Ottawa. And, uh, and of course, there were other people in the party who'd known about John the Engineer Turmel running in politics for the last five years in the Ottawa area. And therefore, they said, we can't have him pushing in our, his ideas in our party. We don't want him to run as a candidate in the upcoming general election, 1984. So, uh, the election is called, and I've announced I want to be a candidate. I want to run for the Green Party. I'm green. I, had the, I was the guy with the umbrella with the holes in it at the acid rain demonstrations. And uh, so, I wanted to run. Well, they decided that the best way to make sure I couldn't run was to not have any candidates or a convention in the Ottawa area. So they didn't host and plan any conventions. And I'm bugging them, what's going on? I want to run. Let's have a convention. No, nope, no convention. So I decided at the last moment, a month before or so, to invite every Green in the party to come to a convention where people in the riding would elect a representative for their riding to run in the election as a Green. Well, on the day now, so on the day of my convention, there's a big announcement by Trevor Hancock, leader of the party, supposedly, you know, figurehead leader, that I will not endorse John Turmel's candidacy because he has that power in the election act. No paper leader, no more. And I have appointed John Dodson to be the candidate for the Greens in Ottawa Center. Well, we go ahead that night and hold the convention anyway. And because I'd run it so fairly, I got beaten in the nomination for Ottawa Center, so they ended up cheating the wrong guy. The other guy, McLeod, was an honest-to-goodness green from the start who just wanted to run, showed up at the convention, and won. And now he, now he knows, finds out that there's a guy named John Dodson who's been appointed by the leader for Ottawa Center because they expected me to stack the meeting and win. Hancock accused me of wanting to push my own ideas in the Green Party, which is not allowed. And he accused me of competitive stacking, which is getting people to join the party to vote for me and my ideas. Competitive stacking. So I was condemned for competitive stacking and wanting to use the party to push my own ideas. Because we can only push Trevor Hancock's ideas, I suppose. And uh, so anyway, they cheated the wrong guy. What do they do now? They look really bad. So they get Greg Vezina, an organizer, to call another election meeting, this one authorized by the party. After they refused all the way, I ran my unofficial one that was discredited. Now they got to run a real one. 
And this time they tell McLeod, you run, we'll vote for you and you'll be the candidate. So he did. Anyway, in the meantime, all our candidates who were nominated there were disqualified by Hancock. So we all show up at the other nomination meeting and we bring along a video camera. 1984, new technology. So there's a vote immediately to ban video cameras. And 24 to 23, I think, was the score. Well, that settled everything for the rest of the day. Like every majority, they took away the rights of the minority. So what they did was instead of having nominations voted for by people who live in the riding, they decided to have the nominations voted for by the whole group every time. So every time it was at least 24 votes for someone who wasn't one of our guys. And that way they got to pack every slot with their majority. And that's how Green Party politics worked at the time. So we still ran against those Greens as independents and called them crooks for taking the nominations without elections and stuff like that. But that's my experience with the Green Party of Canada when I first joined in 1984. And then I was expelled in 1985 from the Green Party of Canada by the Ontario branch. So now John Douglas Smith this is the fellow who didn't get the chance to run in the election. He's, this is Douglas Smith here. And after receiving his doctorate from McGill University, he taught anthropology for 20 years at York University. Well, I only got a grade 17 in engineering and this guy's like a, got a grade 21. So that's pretty good. Um, member of the Ontario College of Homeopathic Medicine. In 2003 and 2007, he ran as the Green Party candidate for Halliburton Kawartha Lakes Brock. And in the latter contest, he received 7.5% of the vote. Good score, you know. So anyway, this is the guy who ran last time and they cut him out of the chance to run again by not having a convention and appointing Schreiner. Wow. Schreiner defended the party's decision and more than held his own when responding to the concerns of local voters. NDP newcomer Lynn Edwards said that Liberal candidate Rick Johnson would be nothing but a lame mouthpiece for Premier Dalton McGinty. And the comment hung in the air until Johnson's next opportunity to speak, but it fell on the ground when he chose not to respond. The big issues of the day. Um, the, the seven candidates present, seven out of nine, uh, had to repeatedly weigh in on the debate, and the evening was only an uh, opportunity they'll get to see most of the candidates in one room together, sponsored by the Halliburton County Echo, the Minden Times, and 100.9 Canoe FM, the organizers who couldn't find my phone number or my email. And that's why the, board, the debate was so boring. When you keep the live wire off the show, what do you want? The debate had to be fit into the tight campaign schedule leading up to March 5th by-election. And uh, there's a brief synopsis of the candidates' answers to various questions, along with video from the forum posted here on the ECHO's website. Well, I went over to the uh, photos.halliburtonecho.ca slash mycapture slash category dot ASP, where you can see the video of the all-candidates meeting. And... Uh, they had Lynn Edwards, Rick Johnson, Mike Schreiner, and John Tory, and then didn't bother putting the other three guys who showed up to the debate. Democracy in Halliburton Minden. I guess that the Green Party is just as crooked as the Green Party under Trevor Hancock and all the other crooked leaders they've had since then. It's ugly. Small party politics, and I lived it.